Welcome to Voice of the Covenant Bible Study. I'm so glad you're here today, and I hope you're going to get ready to learn and expect to receive from God. I believe that God's going to show you some things about our study today that's going to transform your life. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person that's studying along with me. Touch their heart right now. Open their understanding so that they can learn more about you. Lord, I just thank you that they have a desire to know you and to know your word. I pray that your spirit is right there with them in helping them to understand your word and to receive exactly what you have for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, all this month we could be continuing our study called Prayer Basics, Five Essential Elements to Effective Prayer. And each essential element begins with the letter A, which made them easier for me to remember, and I hope they'll be easy for you too. I mentioned this last week on our study. And those five things are, number one, abide, ask, assurance, authority, and assignments. So there's five of them that the Lord gave me this teaching years ago, uh, and I just it has meant so much to me, and I hope that it'll help you to remember these basic things about prayer. Now there's much more about prayer, but this is one study that that um, will help you get rooted and understand the some primary things, because there's no way to understand. I mean, there are people who have studied on prayer their entire life, and there's they've written big books and and whole volumes of you know it's things on prayer. But we're going we're gonna to hit the highlights, and I believe the things that we're going to learn are going to be exactly what you need to help you in your prayer life. And if you remember our study last week, we began with the first one, which is abide. And they're not exactly in a, in a sequential order. I mean, they're, each one has a truth and a standalone truth in themselves. But last week we talked about abide. And we read the words of Jesus in John 15, verse 7 in the King James Bible. And it says, if you abide in me... And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's powerful. And you know, although this is the very first prayer basic that we talked about, it's still enough, still great enough to get your prayer answered. So let's turn now to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 7 and 8 in our Bible study. And we're going to continue with this study on our, with the second essential element to effective prayer, which is ask. You know, most people don't realize that Jesus taught us to ask God for the things that we need and want in this life. And we're going to read Matthew chapter 7 right now in the verse 7 and 8 in the King James Bible. It says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You know, this verse makes it very clear that Jesus taught us to ask and he wants us to ask. And now we're going to turn to John 16 and verse 23 and 24 and see something else about this as well. You know, even though the Father knows what you need before you ask, it is still his will that you ask. Now that ought to help you because that helped me so much to realize that, you know, well, I I would walk just coast along in life. I think, well, why should I ask him? He already knows what I need. Well, he does, but he still wants you to ask. In fact, so often you'll see that in the word, even when Jesus went to the blind man and you could tell that he was blind, uh, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Well, he wants us to give voice to what we want so that we can, we can, have something ownership of what we're believing for and it's our voice is connected to our promise so it's important that you learn that he wants you to ask and it's and he doesn't want to withhold it he wants to show you how to get the things that you need in life and when you do that he promises that you shall receive let's look at this in John chapter 16 verse 23 and 24 in the King James Bible and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily Now, that's kind of like really emphasizing this. Get this. I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Notice that whatsoever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he will give it to you. Now, this is so that your joy will be full. That's what Jesus said. Let's turn to to Psalms 78, verse 41. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures this month, and I hope you'll write them down and go back and look at them yourself. It's so important that you do that. It just will reinforce and strengthen you uh, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So each time you read those scriptures, you're going to get stronger and stronger in your understanding about prayer or whatever it is that you need from God. 
I heard this quote from John Wesley. You know, he was a great theologian. I think he started the Methodist Church. He said, it seems God is limited by our prayer life, that he can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him. Now, that's a great observation. It's such a powerful truth. You know, it's difficult to understand that the creator is limited by the creation, but it is true. God is just, and he will not intervene in our lives without being asked or invited. Those are the guidelines that he placed in place in the earth. And a perfect example of this is the Israelites that refused to possess their promised land. And we see this in Psalm 78, verse 41 in the King James Version. Listen to this powerful passage of scripture. Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Think about that. These Israelites were... God was doing miracles for them, and they continued to refuse to believe him when he talked to them. If you read the Old Testament, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. We're not going to get into all that today, but the fact that God's creation uh, can limit him in their life and what he wants to do for them is so very powerful. They turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. You see, when you refuse to ask God for the things that you need, regardless of your reasons, you limit God in the earth and in your life. Now let's look at Psalms 145. We're gonna look at verse 18 and 19 and see some more powerful things about this whole subject about asking. You know, with so many people in the earth asking, have you ever wondered how God knows who is who? I have. Well, you know, well, the same way that your fingerprints are unique to you alone, your voice has a voice print that is unique to you. It is your address in the spirit realm, and it is easily recognized by God. You know, years ago, you wouldn't have thought about that, that that was even possible. But with technology today and all this voice recognition and face recognition software, it's easier for us to comprehend this. But this has been a truth that's been established for a long time about our voice print is so unique. God does hear our voice. He does recognize us. But his system is so much more sophisticated than telephone voicemail or your computer emails or even the, the voice recognition maybe in your car or, or in your home or if, if you have a, a, a Alexa, an Alexa device or some kind of other Siri device, all these things they have that's available today. But so God's system is so much more uh, sophisticated than all of those things. And it's not limited by time or distance. When you cry out to God, he instantly identifies your voice print. Not only does he hear it, the Bible says he is always near to those who call him in truth and will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. So go ahead and ask. It's his idea. Let's read this in Psalms 145, verse 18 and 19. It says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him and all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Isn't that powerful? You see, you can talk to God because he listens. Your voice matters in heaven. He takes you very seriously. And when you enter into his presence, the attendants in the room turn to hear your voice. No need to fear that you'll be ignored. Even if you stammer or stumble or mess up a little bit, like I do sometimes when I'm reading the scriptures, even if you have what you say impresses nobody else, remember, it always impresses God. He loves you and he listens and hears you. So he listens and he listens intently and he listens carefully. I love that. I don't know about you, that is so comforting to me to know that that's how, what a characteristic of our wonderful Heavenly Father. You see, your prayers are honored as precious, precious jewels. Your words don't stop until they reach the very throne of God. And your prayers move God to change the world. And the reason that most people don't approach God in this way is because they still don't understand what it means to be righteous. But when you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that because of what Jesus did, if you're a born again believer, God sees you just as righteous as Jesus. That's what his blood does. But when you believe that and understand it, it will change your approach to everything in life. 
you will refuse to put up with anything less than God's best for you and your household. That reminds me of so often we go someplace and somebody says, no, you can't do that. If I know God is telling me to do something, I don't have to make a big uh, scene about it, but I can stay true to what I'm believing because I refuse to take no from somebody who can't say yes. So if God's already told me yes about something, even if the circumstances say no, I'm just, I'm determined and I want you to be that way too in your prayer life to keep moving forward because you know that God has said yes. In fact, the Bible teaches us that all the promises of God are yes and amen. We're going to turn to Ephesians chapter 6 and see a powerful truth as well. Some more great scriptures today. We're going to look at verse 18. You know, prayer enables you to keep alert to the devil's plans against you and is the only way that you'll be able to successfully rule over the situations in life. You know, you may not hear a phrase or hear a word, but there'll be a, a something in your spirit that will cause you to pause and when something's not going quite well, or God will give you an indication that you need to spend time and ask him or go, you know, speak to him about some things and question some things. So you have to follow what I call the promptings of the Holy Spirit in your life. And, and if you, when you become more sensitive to that, it, it really is very liberating. And you're not walking around in fear, but you just know that God can give you up to the minute instructions, not just for you to know, but so that you can go to him about it in prayer and ask him for the things that he's actually prompting you to pray about. It's really amazing. Let's read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 in the Amplified Bible. It says, pray at all times. Now this, past, this verse comes at the long end of the list of the whole armor of God, where it says, put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, take on the the breastplate of righteousness, all those things that are in there. It talks about standing for God. And all of those things are really positional, those equipment about prayer. But So that's why it ends with verse 18 here. But when people read and teach on the armor of God, many times they leave off this very important ending verse. It's verse 18. It, it describes your attitude and your position in prayer once all that armor is in place and, and that you, you, you activate it. It says, pray at all times, on every occasion, in every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. I love this, this, this scripture. It's so powerful. It shows you how complex prayer can be and how it can be sometimes just like going down a really sm slow road, but other times it's like a roller coaster. God's showing you things that need to be prayed out. But notice that it says all manner of prayer. Let's take a moment and review a few of the different types of prayer before we go on. Well, there's, you may have heard of it, uh, some people have said there's a whole lot of words, like 35 different types of prayer. I'm not sure about all of that, but I'm sure it's, it's we're not going to go through all of those today. But there's a few that I just want to highlight. First of all, the prayer of faith, which is also called the prayer of petition. You may have heard of that. Or the prayer to change things. And it's always based on God's revealed word. And it never contains the word if. You see, although there are many types of prayer, it's vital that we always pray in faith and expect results every single time. I heard a story about a congregation that met in a field to, to pray about rain to release a long dry spell. The preacher looked around at all of his flock that came there to pray for rain. And he looked at him and he said this in this little quote, it says, brothers and sisters, y'all know why, why we are here. Now, what I want to know is where are your umbrellas? You see, he could tell that they didn't really come expecting to receive that answer because if they did, they'd have had an umbrella ready because they knew it was going to rain. So that was really a, a beautiful illustration to me about how we need to pray in faith and expect results every single time. And the prayer of consecration is another pr type of prayer, and it's often called the prayer of commitment as well. And it's very different from the prayer of faith. And it is the type of prayer that Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. We talked about this on last week's teaching. And this is where Jesus said in Luke chapter 22, verse 42, he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You see, that was a prayer of consecration or 
prayer of commitment is what it's sometimes called. You see, he, wasn't, he knew God's will, so he didn't have to say, Lord, if it's... He was just saying that I'm willing to do what you called me to do. I want to do your will. So when Jesus... Uh, people mistakenly think that every type of prayer should end by asking for God's will to be done. And they'll sometimes use things like this. But when Jesus prayed for the sick, he did not end it with, if it be thy will. We know from God's word that it's always his will to heal the sick, save the lost, and deliver the oppressed. We know what God's will is if we know his word, because his word is his will. And I've heard someone say that faith begins where the will of God is known. Once you know the will of God about whatever it is you're believing for, for example, if you've sowed seed, you know that the will of God is for you to receive a harvest because Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake it together, run it over. So when you're praying for the harvest on the seed that you sow, you don't have to end that with, Lord, if it be your will, bring me a harvest. No, it is his will because he's the one who told you to sow. And so we, that applies at so many other levels of, of things that we pray about that we, don't, we, we can always just pray in faith and we don't need to end our prayers, which some people get in the habit of doing, just maybe brought up religiously that way. We don't say, Lord, if it be your will, when we're praying for things that we already know what his will is. We know from God's word that he has some promises that he's already given us. And that's why we do that. Because Jesus often told the sick things like, your faith has made you whole. So that's really a powerful statement. You know, I heard the story, a friend of mine told me that he used to pray, if it be thy will, for other people when he was praying for them that when they were sick. But when the tables were turned and he was the one that was near death, he didn't want to hear the words, if it be thy will, heal him, Lord. No, he wanted someone to, that he, to pray for him that knew the difference between the prayer of consecration and the prayer of faith. There is a difference. He wanted someone to pray the prayer of faith so that he would be healed. He didn't want to hear, Lord, if it be your will. He, he felt like he knew, he knew the promises of God that he had a, God's will was for him to be whole and healed. So that's the difference between the prayer of faith and the prayer of consecration. Another type of prayer is a prayer of worship, and we're not going to get into all that. Prayer of agreement. We're not going to get into all of that right now. There's also the united, a united prayer where you agree together. There's also intercessory prayer. Uh, where we, may, we may get into some of that later in this teaching. And, but I want us to turn to 1 Corinthians and look at uh, another type of prayer. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to look at spiritual prayer, which is so important. Another way that some people call it is praying in an unknown tongue, which is another type of prayer. And this are the words of the Apostle Paul when he was writing to the church at Corinth. Now, that church at Corinth was a church that really flowed heavily in the gifts of the Spirit. They, they really were always just speaking in tongues and praying. And he wanted to bring some, some teaching and some wisdom into that church. And he spoke this to them in verse 13. And this is really going to help, me, help us to understand that there is such a thing as spiritual prayer. He says, therefore, the person who speaks in an unknown tongue should pray for the power to interpret and explain what he says. Now, this is really referring to the gifts of the Spirit, and we're going to study about that in April. So I hope you'll be standing tuned. We're going to go into a study about the gifts of the Spirit next after this month's teaching on prayer. And verse 14 says, For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit by the Holy Spirit within me prays. But my mind is unproductive. It bears no fruit and helps nobody. Verse 15 says, Then what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that's within me, but I will also pray intelligently with my mind and understanding. I will sing with my spirit by the Holy Spirit that is within me, but I will sing intelligently with my mind and understanding also. So here they were in this public situation where other people were around. So when you, this prayer language that God gives us to pray spiritual prayers, that's for when we're praying alone with by ourselves. But when we're in a congregation, there may be times where the whole congregation may be led or instructed to pray in tongues for a moment. And that's, that's the heavenly language speaking to God. But for the purpose of this study, when I'm talking about spiritual pray, prayers, I'm talking about when you're 
talking to God and you're being led by the Spirit and you're not sure what to pray for. We're going to hopefully I think I have some reference to this in future teachings, but it is so important for you to know that's called spiritual prayers. And that's the, the language of heaven coming promptings through the Holy Spirit and causing you to speak something in, in an unknown tongue, language you do not understand. And there are times when you pray this way as well that the Spirit will give you the understanding and so you can do both. Now, you know, later in the chapter, Paul was talking about how uh, he, he wanted them to have wisdom, but he says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than all of you. But there's still order and there's still rules and guidelines to when you apply and, and flow in the gifts of the Spirit in this way. But spiritual praying is a very real thing and it's a very important part of our prayer life and you need to cultivate that. If you don't have the gift of, you know, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you don't pray in tongues, seek and ask the Lord for it because He wants to give it to you. The Bible tells us that this promise is for you and for your children and your children's children, whosoever will believe it. And uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you've read the, the book of Acts, you, you, can under, you can understand what really happened well, on the day of Pentecost. And, and go there and read it, and, and God will show you some things that you need to learn for your own life. Don't pass up those spiritual prayers. It's a very important part, especially when you don't know how to pray. The Spirit can come alongside of you, with you, and help to pray through you for the things that you need in your life. Now let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 9 through 11 in a moment. You see, you may not understand the mystery of prayer, but you know, you don't need to. You don't have to understand everything about it. But actions in heaven begin when someone prays on earth. I'm going to say that again. Actions in heaven begin when someone prays on earth. Remember, Jesus taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants us to realize that the prayers that we pray affect heaven and it affects earth. I hope we get, we're, we won't be much longer. Just, just turn, with, stick with me. Matt, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 7 and look at verse 9 and 11. It says, for what man is, a, this is Jesus' words. He says, for what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to him that ask him? So this verse makes it clear that your heavenly Father wants to give you good things when you ask him. Are you thinking about some good things to ask your heavenly Father? You know, as we close today, I want you to remember Jesus' promises of, of receiving belongs to everyone that will ask and it's just the second essential element of effective prayer that we've been we'll be studying this month. And I hope you'll join me for next week for a continuation of our Bible study, Prayer Basics, Five Essential Elements for Effective Prayer. And next week, we will learn how to pray with assurance. So I hope that you'll join me. But before we close in prayer, I want to take a moment to thank our ministry partners for their faithful financial support. They make it, all of this possible. And I appreciate all that, you're, that you've done, helped us with for here 46 years of preaching the gospel. And it's all because of our partners that trust us and we trust the Lord together. And God is reaching people all over the world with his good news. And there are ways that you can give if you've never given. Maybe you'd like to do that today. Maybe the Lord is speaking to you and you know that. You can go to jdm.org. You can use PayPal text to give or a JDM app. All of that information is on, on the screen. Just know that it'll go, it's going into good soil and it'll help other people hear the good news about Jesus. And it's good that when God speaks to your heart that you obey him promptly. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word that we've studied today. Lord, I pray that your word would sink deep into our heart and help us to, to grow in wisdom and understanding, that you'd help us to, to know how to pray effectively by applying the truths that we've learned today. Lord, I pray a blessing on everybody that's listening. Lord, if they're not born again, Lord, touch their heart. Teach them, Lord. I, I ask them to, to just pray a simple prayer. Lord, forgive me. Come into my life. Forgive me my sins. And Lord, if they've never been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd Fill them even now, Lord, to overflowing. Baptize them with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, so they can begin praying those spiritual prayers that we talked about today. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Join me next time. Bye-bye. Hello, I'm Jesse the Planners, and I'm reminding you to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. 
This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.